There it goes. All right. We're going to do exercise 623. Okay. All right, guys. It says, the set, oh, how would you approach vector exfoliation first? How would you spend it out? I'm going to start with what? Balance per uh, books. Books? That's what's in my books means my general ledger, okay, guys? My cash account, my general ledger. Everybody agree with that? I want to start with that balance on one side, or you can go down the page. I don't care. However you want to do it. Okay, and then balance for what? Bank. Bank. So that's what's on my bank uh, statement, huh? So I've got two different balances for cash, and probably neither one's right, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the things that, that I know about that the bank doesn't know about, and I'll adjust the bank for that. Does that make sense? Okay? And then I'll find the things that the bank knows about that I don't know about, and I'll balance, and I'll adjust, rather, the books for that. And by the time I get done, when I get down at the bottom here, what do I want to have? I want an adjusted balance for both of them. This adjusted balance, by the way, of course, is what I'm going to make my journal entry on, right? The what's in the books now compared to what I think it should be when I'm done, okay? And then I'm going to have to the bank, the balance per bank, and I'm going to work down to an adjusted balance here, and it's going to be exactly the same balance. That's what I'm doing, okay? But I'm not going to make a journal entry on the bank's books. They're not going to either, right? Everybody got it? So, let's see what we got. What kind of information do we have in this box? So, when I approach a problem where it says bank reconciliation, it asks for a bank reconciliation, I'm going to get that down, and I'm going to say, okay, what do, I, what do I want to find first? What two things do I want right away? Balance for the books, balance for the bank. That's it, okay? So if they just give them to me, I'm thrilled. Is there a bank statement there? Yeah. Look at that. Does it have a balance at the end of the accounting period? Yes. Yeah, it's 5770 Well, that was easy. <coughs> where do I put it? Balance for bank. By the way, tell me if I do something wrong here. Good. When things get real easy, if you notice, I get really sloppy. It's like we were, if we were to go to work, and you were new and I'm old and experienced, right? Let me tell you, you have experience. You'd have to do the easy stuff, you know why? One, because you wouldn't know how to do the hard stuff yet, yeah, right? Two, because I'd be really sloppy. Your attention to detail would be far better, right? Always remember that with your boss. When they can't do the work that you're doing, they're probably used to know how, right? Just, just too careless because it's just weak. Okay. 5770. Oh. Okay, anyway, and then, I, hey, I like to have the balance per book. Anybody got any ideas about that? See, it shows the September 1st balance is 6,500. See, that T account, you know that represents the general ledger account, don't you? Right? This is easy. 6,500. Oh, and then they had deposits. That's a debit, of course. Uh, yeah, deposits are a debit, aren't they? Right? And then there's a check written. Well, of course, that's the cash first, but that's credit, isn't it? There's no ending balance. What, what do you think you might try to do? Add the deposits and subtract the credit. I think so. Right? Is this getting to be just common sense? Accounting's just common sense. Right? That's it. Okay? So it takes 6,500 plus 28,1 less 28,9. And what do you have, James? 5,700. 5,700? Is that all it is? We only have 70 bucks to look for? I guess. Is that right? I don't care. Okay, sounds good. Okay, they want us to reconcile the account, of course. There were no outstanding checks or deposits in transit from last time. If there were, what would you want to make sure of? That the deposits indeed got to the bank, right? Well, hope so. Yeah, but otherwise, it wasn't really a deposit for transit by now, right? Okay, that that got there. And then on the checks, there might be, you know, 200 outstanding checks. Or 10,000 in a big company, right? They can write them the last day, mail them all, right? Okay, there might be a whole bunch of outstanding checks. What do you want to make sure with those? They all cleared. If they didn't, what's the deal? What do I mean by cleared? They got to the bank, right? It came out of your account. What if they don't clear? What does it mean? <coughs> they are still outstanding, and you put them on your outstanding uh, checklist, right? Is it possible that they can be outstanding for longer than a month? Of course, right? Particularly on payroll accounts, right? People do weird things. When I worked at Oyster Mushroom Department, we had a lot of women, mostly, uh, who cut mushrooms, picked the mushrooms, right? Uh, and they were from Taiwan, Korea, uh, Vietnam. I learned to like kimchi. Kimchi made me. Anybody ever had kimchi in here? Yeah, it's wonderful stuff if it's made right. And if it's made wrong, what's it like? God awful, horrible stuff. It's been, yeah, but it's really good. It can be very, very hot, though. I mean, spicy hot. I can't burn the hell out of it. That's how it's hot. Yeah, it's really hot. Uh, 
But anyway, uh, they uh, were afraid of banks because they were afraid of governments in general. Really, immigrants, right? New immigrants. And they were just terrified and relatively uneducated immigrants. And so they uh, they were terrified of the government. They were terrified of us. They were terrified of the banks. They were, you know, so they take their checks, no kidding, and they keep them in their dresser. And we had to bring them home. Money to them. No, no, no. You want to put your money, you want to cash these checks and put them in the bank. I had somebody with like $10,000 I started working there of checks. And I said, you have to cash your payroll checks for $10,000. Oh, by the way, they got paid pretty well. You know why? Because they made it for way over the They got paid by the pound. They just moved all oh, day. You know, uh, we didn't have any Caucasian mushroom cutters. Not one. What's wrong with us? We can't work fast enough. We can't move fast enough. I'm not even kidding about that. That's a inferior race. We are. Because we have big guns. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's even worse. Now that we gave women equal rights, that was a big mistake, wasn't it, guys? <laughs> they just took over everything. <laughs> right? <laughs> terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just terrible. Yeah. At least we were bigger than them before. Now, you know, no hope. Yeah. yeah, when I first started, when I, when I was at school, the entire, well, I don't know, there would be like 40 people in the class. And two would be women in accounting classes. When I, they, they this. when I first started teaching, I walked into the classroom the very first time. This is only like eight years later, maybe, seven, eight years later. I walked into the classroom, and it's about 50% women and 50% men. And so this was an accounting I'm in the wrong place. I actually walked out of the room, and I looked at the number on the door to make sure I was in the right place. I came back and said, is this principal of accounting? You know, and yeah. I said, wow, this is cool. This is really neat. Yeah. But anyway, and then, then you know what happens over time, and it's true here too. All of our best graduates are women in accounting. It's a women's field. It's wonderful. So you want to become an accountant so you can hang out with you know, really bright women that make a lot of money. See, see, yeah. He could marry well. Be all right. So, yeah. Well, I've seen his quizzes and tests, so you know, trust me, you guys. Yeah. That was funny. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are good, aren't they? I hope. Yeah, after I said that. Okay. Anyway. So what are you do next, guys? We are gonna look for we know there's nothing for the prior month. So what are we gonna look for? The ones from this month. So what do you think? What what should you do here? You can either do the things the bank knows about that we don't know about, or you can do the things that we know about that the bank doesn't know about. What do you think? Mm -hmm. the outstanding checks. Okay, we could find the outstanding checks. How would we do that? Checks written minus checks cleared. Yeah, and this one is pretty simple, isn't it? Right? Yeah, we don't even have to go through the list of checks. <coughs> so how many checks were written? 28,900? Everybody see that? That would be in our general ledger, right? See it? Okay, P page 314 here. 28,900, right? And then how many checks cleared? 27,400. And none of those were from last month. If there were some from last month, you'd have to subtract it from the 27,400. Hint, hint, hint for the quiz, right? You know, you'd have to consider the ones from last month. So what's the difference between those? 1,500 that never got there. Would you guys agree with that? Where will you put them? We know about them, so they're in our books, of course. That's how it's in the general ledger. The bank doesn't know about them yet. What would you do? Yeah, deduct outstanding checks. Got it. This is so easy. Once you see it, it's practical. But what did I say 1,500 was it? Excellent. Okay, now what do we got, guys? <coughs> Okay, deposits in transit, maybe. Okay, so how would we get those? We know what was deposited in the books. How much was it? 28,100. <coughs> 28, how much got to the bank? 26,900. What do you bet some didn't? How much is the difference there? 1,200. Everybody good? So what do we do with those? We know about them. They're in the books. The bank doesn't know yet. What do we do? <coughs> Add them. Add deposits in transit, right? What did I say? 1,200? You said. Okay, good. Why are we adding the deposits in transit? Because it's going to increase the cash accounts at the bank, right? Why are we subtracting the outstanding checks? Because it's going to reduce it. That's it. Okay? Is there anything else? We don't know about any errors or anything. It doesn't say anything about errors. Right, well, the bank doesn't typically make the errors. We do, right? Okay, now what do we got? Insufficient funds. Okay, there's an NSF check for 170. So what does that mean? 
the bank did what? They put it in our account. We also put it in our account. Then the bank sent it to whoever's bank this was drawn on, another bank, and guess what? There's no money in that account. I have to cover it. So that bank sends it back, usually with fees attached too. And it's going to be a receivable for us. Our bank's going to take it out of the account. We find out about it usually when we get the bank station, right? Or they might notify us. And the other people's bank is going to charge them fees. Our bank is going to charge us fees. It's a mess, right? Okay, so, uh, and then we try to collect it from whoever wrote the bad check, okay? Made a mistake, perhaps. Okay, sometimes it's, it's a mistake, sometimes it's on purpose. Anyway, it's 170 bucks. So we've got it in our books. The bank already took it out, so what do we do? We take it out of ours. That's it, guys. 170 NSF check. Now, we're going to make journal entries for everything on this side over here, right? That's our books, right? So uh, what's that going to be? Looks like credit cash to me. You guys agree with that? Debit what? You said accounts receivable earlier, and that's absolutely right. I'm going to debit accounts receivable and credit cash when I'm done with that. Okay? Yeah? That's good. Okay, then what else do we have? There's a service charge, $60. What's that? That would come out of my account too, right? The bank already took it out. You can see it in the bank statement. They took it out, right? So I need to take it out too. Would you guys agree with that? That's a service charge. And what's that going to be, probably? Maybe miscellaneous expense. It's a small. Some people call it bank expenses, whatever. They want to keep track of it separately. Okay. Is there anything else there you can see? Off the top of your head. Could there be, could they have collected some money for, for us? Yeah, they, we might have some interest and a note, re, note collected. That, that we'd have to add to the balance for, for folks with me and make a journal entry for it. Could they have paid some bills for us? Right? A lot of people have their bills paid by the bank. You know, monthly bills are automatically paid, that kind of thing. You can do that. That would be deducted from our balance per books, right? The bank would already know that. It's just simple. And you just make journal entries for whatever it is, right? That's it. Well, what do we need to do now? Make sure when we add this up that we get what? Same number here and here. Do we? Yeah. I don't know. What's 5,700 less 230? Five, four, seven. Zero is it? Mm -hmm. 5770 plus 1200 less 1500 is? 5470. And we are happy campers. Okay? So now what do we do? Let's do a journal entry game. I want to, oh, I want to adjust the cash from where to where? 5700, right? Down to 5470. What did we say that difference was? A credit of how much? 230. 230. Yeah, guys. What's that? Sure. We are going to adjust this balance down to that balance. That's it, right? Here's what's in the books. We know that. It's in the general ledger. It's in that T account, right? And I want it to be this. Do you agree with that? So I'm going from here to here. How much is that? Well, 230 credit, right? In this particular box. Got it? So I'm going to credit cash for $230, aren't I? So, credit cash, $230. What else do you need to do? What did we have? An NSF check, right? Which we said we were going to go where with it? Accounts receivable. Absolutely. It's easy. And then what else did we have? A service charge. It goes to miscellaneous expense, doesn't it? Excellent. That's 60, isn't it? Ta-da, we're done. You might have some other things, but same idea, isn't it? Easy? Pretty much. Now you can do bank reconciliations for yourself. Wow. Basically, that's it. Okay? Yeah, this is a little bit of a shortcut method on this. What else ought we do? Uh, maybe, um, want to do 624? Exercise 624. I guess we'll do Stuff. By the way, if you don't see something on a quiz, does that mean it'll never be on a test? You already know that's not the case. But I'll tell you what, there won't be anything on the final that isn't on either a quiz or a test. There won't be any surprises. Okay? So, but there, there could be on a test because I can't just, I can't fit enough on the quiz. Okay? On those quizzes I intended, that I'm doing a quiz every chapter, I intended to have 30 minutes of quiz and about 20 minutes of going over the quiz. 
but you guys are so slow uh, quizzes. Are, I always write quickly too long, so they end up being an hour. I don't think so. This will work well. Do anything over. Well. I, I think. I bet you guys do well on it. Get ready, get ready and go after it. You know what? That's not the funny thing, too. Does it really make any difference how much time I give you on the quiz? You know this, that no matter how much time I give you, the scores come out about the same. <coughs> you either know it or you don't. It's awful. Working real slow doesn't help you guys. That doesn't help. Going over and going over and going over it doesn't help. So you have to take home quiz what you can do. Work it. Stop. Do something else. Same thing. Pretty much true. When you're at work, think about stuff you do at work. It's a fairly complex thing. Doing it over and over makes it better, right? No, it doesn't unless you're an artist. You're practicing, right? You got a musician sitting here, he's like, yes, it does make it better. Yeah. It does because you're learning more and more. It's not because you're making a finished product better and better, right? Not really. Do it. It's a learning process. So do that when you're studying. When you do it, just do it. Okay? It works better. Okay, 624, let's do that. Side. So can you do these? Are these easy? I hope. So two items of merchandise to customer B who charged 450 sales price on their Visa credit card. Visa charges 2% on the credit for a credit card fee. Oh my. What do we do with that? Credit card sales. There's a lot of credit card sales, right? What do you do with credit card sales? What's your sale? 450, you want a credit sales revenue for 450? Probably wouldn't want to do that. Is this debit cash or debit accounts receivable? It's accounts receivable if what? <laughs> It's the credit card company who's going to give, they're going to give you the money, right? The person using the credit card is borrowing the money from the credit card company, the bank, right? Okay. And then what? They're going to pay them later, right? Hopefully. And But what's going to happen to us? The credit card company is going to send us money later. So it could be an account receivable from the credit card company, right? That's one possibility. Could be account receivable for credit cards, okay? Something like that. How much is that? not 450 they're not going to give us that. They're charging us a fee for the credit card, right? We don't have to worry about bad debts. The credit card company's worried about that, right? And we get our money pretty quickly. They're going to pay us real, real fast, right? Okay, what would that be? It's a 2% discount, right? So what's that, 9 bucks? So how much are they going to pay us later? 441 Just figure it out, right? And then what's the $9? It could be credit card expense, you could call it that. It's kind of an interest thing in a way, but not for some people call it interest <coughs> expense. I don't like that very well. Credit card fee expense, you like that? So probably credit card fee expense, it works fine. It's different with different companies. Okay? Something like that. But you know what? That's for small companies. For really big companies, you know what happens when you use your credit card at Kroger or someplace? The credit card company is not going to write them a check later. What does a credit card company do? They put the money into their account, yeah. It's a debit for you, right, credit for them, to, to your account, right? Okay, so what's that going to be? How would that look if, it, if that's the situation, everybody? Wouldn't be accounts receivable, it would be cash. Absolutely, that's it. And that's really more common, okay? In terms of the number of transactions, it's more common, right? Big companies do it like that. That makes sense? Okay. So I'd have to take either of those things as it didn't say how big the company was, did it? Okay. Daily retailers. Sold 14 items. So that's it. Sold 14 items of merchandise to, to customer C at an invoice price of 2800 <coughs> Terms 2% 10, net 30. Okay. By the way, you know what we should be doing? These guys are selling merchandise. What should we have besides sales? It's going to be in the next chapter. What, and we've already done it a little bit. What should we have? Yeah, we credit inventory. We give them the inventory and debit what? Cost goods sold, sure. So we're leaving that out so far, aren't we? We're going to pick that up in the next chapter. Oh, one other thing. 
over the weekend, for heaven's sakes, read the chapter and work some problems, right? Okay? Because we're going to write on to a new one, right? And inventory is really kind of difficult. There are a whole bunch of different ways to calculate inventory. Okay? So there's periodic and perpetual and lipo, fipo, and average in each of them. Right? So that's six different ways. Am I going to expect you to know all six? Of course. And then I'm going to I'm going to expect you to do both inventory and cost of goods sold for all six. So that makes it twelve. Okay? That's one problem. Everybody got it? So do you want to read the inventory chapter over the weekend after you get done with this little quiz? Yeah. Okay. Be sure and do it. Be sure and do it. Try to understand it. Figure things out. Okay? And we'll, we'll be flying on that stuff. Okay. Good. So, so what do you want to do with this one? Do you have a what? Accounts receivable. How much is it? 2,800. was it? Credit what? Sales revenue again. Or you can just say sales if you want, guys. We're, we're far enough along now you can do that. Okay? We all know it's revenue. Okay? I like to put, write the word revenue down until I know that you know. Well, most people just call sales. Okay? You go either way, though. Then on the 28th, sold 12 identical items of merchandise to D at an invoice price of 7200 total. Okay? All right. So I guess they're, what, 600 each? Uh, terms, 2% net 10. So that's the same sort of thing, right? <coughs> okay. Debit what accounts are 7,200. Credit sales revenue. <coughs> 7,200. Okay. Good. Customer D returned one of the items they purchased on the 28th was defective and credit was given to the customer. Okay. So this is only two days later, so they haven't paid anything, right? Okay, obviously. Um, so what do we do with that? They were 600 each, were they? Okay, 7,200 divided by 12. Mm -hmm. And two of them were returned. How much is that? <coughs> Just one. one. Only one was returned? I apologize. So 600 was returned? <coughs> All right. Debit something, credit something. If, if they returned it, do they owe us some money? No, so what do you want to do? <coughs> Well, they don't owe us the money, so what'll I what will I reduce? Credit. The receivable. So I'll credit accounts receivable. Okay, so that would be the credit to accounts receivable. But you're right, what would we debit? Okay. The sales return allowance, okay? Which is what kind of an account? Contra, Contra asset. asset. Good. All right. Contra asset. So now I'd have my sales if I was doing my sales and my income statement, I'd add up <laughs> four fifty, twenty eight hundred, seventy two hundred Right, get the gross sales, and then I would subtract the sales returns and allowances to get the net sales. Everybody agree? That's what we do. Okay, so be able to do something like that if I ask you to. Big deal. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, paid or customer D paid the balance in full on December sixth. Now, what do I need to do at this point? Figure out how long it was. If it's less than, it's ten or less. What do they do? They get a two percent discount. If it's more than ten. They get no discount. That's it. Okay, so we go back to customer D. Customer D is the one who returns some stuff, right? So how much does customer D owe me? That's this stuff, right? They don't owe me seventy-two hundred. What do they owe me? Six thousand six hundred. Is that right? Okay, because they bought seventy-two hundred, they returned six hundred. They owed me 7,200, and, and then we gave them a credit for 600. They only owe me 6,600. Everybody agree with that? How much discount are you going to give? Are you going to give a discount on the whole 7,200 or just on uh, the 6,006 they owe you? Yeah, just what they bought from you. So it's going to be 2% of that, isn't it? Now, oh, by the way, did they pay within 10 days? Yes, they did. That's less than 10 days. Isn't it? Okay, good. So they get the discount. How much is the discount? 132 bucks. Okay. So instead of giving us 6,600, they're going to subtract 132 <coughs> from it. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So 6,600 less 132, how much cash is that going to be? 6468. Six, That's the cash that we're going to receive. Everybody good? So what are you going to debit? What would you get? Cash. cash. Absolutely. 6468. What, what are they paying off? The whole account receivable. How much was that? What's left in there? 
6,600, right guys? If you put 7,200 in and then you took out 600, that's what's in there, right? And then we need a debit for 132 and conveniently we call that what? <laughs> Sales discount. We're paying early. It's costing us a lot for that. 2% for 20 days, right? We're paying 1% every 10 days. That's 36.5% interest a year, right? Why would we do that? We want people to pay us sooner because it's less apt to be a bad debt if they pay them sooner. Got the idea? And we want more sales. If our competitors are giving a 2% discount, guess what we get to do? 2% discount, right? Most companies don't go that big anymore. That's really high interest. Rate. Okay? All right. So everybody good with that? If I'm going to do sales now, I'm on top of my income statement, I'm going to show the sales revenue of those three sales added up, right? That would be my gross sales. Then I'm going to show less the sales returns and allowances and less the sales discounts, and the net sales will be the difference. Got it? It's easy, isn't it? Okay? You know why? You guys aren't going to be preparing financial statements for a living. Even if you're an accountant, you're not going to. Computers do that. You have to be able to tell whether they're right or wrong. You have to make decisions about it, make judgments, right? Nobody prepares financial statements. Computers do. I'm not kidding. Do you have to be able to read one? Oh, my. If you can't, you're not going to go very far. Okay? Remember what we're doing here. So are you going to know what you're looking at now when you see sales and sales returns and allowances and sales discounts? And will you know it for the rest of your career? Yeah, why not? Right? You'll know what you're doing. You won't be one of those executive MBAs that's sitting in there asking me what a sales returns and allowances or a sales discount. Okay? You won't be in that category. Got it? And if you're a physician, you don't know what that is. Of course not. You guys are actually getting an education. What a deal, huh? If you're a physician who wants to run your own business now, you need to know it. Yeah. So they're spending a whole bunch of money and spending a whole bunch of time. You know what? They're spending an incredible amount of money because all the time they, time that they spend working on the EMBA, they could be treating patients. They make a lot an hour, don't they, doctor? Right? When is it cheaper for you to learn this stuff? Now or then? Because you guys are making minimum wage right now. Yeah. Instead of, you know, $100 an hour or something. Yeah. So think about it that way. Don't you wish you'd done it earlier? Yeah, oh yeah, always. You did something else earlier. So that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you learn when, just keep learning stuff, you guys. It'll really pay off. That really doesn't matter if you do it. On the thirtieth though, these guys are gonna pay in full on that invoice, but what happened? How many days went by? More than thirty. More than thirty even, right? It was it what was that, the twenty fifth we sold it to them? And now it's the thirtieth? Geez, they they went over the 30 days. Okay, oh wow. Well, we're glad we got paid, right? So it's from November 25th. But what are they going to have to pay us, of course? We're going to insist on it. The total amount. And how much was the invoice? 2800 So what are they going to give us? 2800 Debit cash? And credit? Ta da. Are we the other people or what? And we're there. Okay? Is that the end of it? What else would you like to do? Want to do something on uh, allowance for doubtful accounts? Or? <coughs> Revenue recognition? I don't care. Number 16? Exercise 16? Yes. Can I hear a 20? Yeah, 16 would be good. Yeah, all right. Make sure you understand what's going on. You know. Does it pay to work these problems? Some of you guys actually working problems and looking up the answer? It pays off, doesn't it? It really does. And when you start trying to do the uh, practice quiz I gave you, right? You know what you're doing. You have a chance. Are my quiz questions harder than the problems usually? I don't know. You have the answers to look at when you do the problem. It gives you the feeling, right, that maybe it's not as hard. Some of them are pretty hard. Some of the problems are pretty involved. Most of the exercises aren't too bad. Okay, so we're going to do 16 anyway. Inferring bad debt expense, okay? Determine the, uh, the impact on uncollectible accounts and income and working capital. What's working capital? Current assets minus current liabilities is supposed to be your working capital. Okay. Right. The recent annual report for Target, you know who they are, Target contain the following information, dollars and thousands at the end of its fiscal year, okay? Accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful accounts, 
The accounts receivable is what all your customers owe you, right guys? The allowance for doubtful accounts is your estimate of the portion of those receivables you're never going to collect, right? And the net accounts receivable, they should have put a line on it, the, the, the name on it. The net accounts receivable, the difference is what? The receivables you think you're going to collect. That's it. So when you look at a balance sheet, you'll know what you're looking for. Now, okay? Which number do you really care about? Which you can pay. <laughs> That's the one I like. Okay. A footnote to the financial statements disclosed the unclosed accounts amounting to 414000 and 854 were written off as bad debt expense. It was bad debts. We could have looked at the income statement and seen it probably too. So they've got a lot, don't they? Okay? Assuming that the tax rate is 30%, okay, respectively, and then assume the tax rate is 30%. That means every dollar of income I have, I pay 30 cents to the federal government, and I get to keep 70, right, guys? That's what it is, okay? And that sounds horrible, but then we like to kind of have roads to drive on and stuff, right? And I guess we like to have Congress. Uh, it's paying a lot of money, but yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the president. No. Okay. So, okay. Determine the bad debt expense for year two based on the preceding facts. Hint, use the allowance for doubtful accounts, B accounts. And we didn't need that. Okay. So, what do you want to do with this? Let's figure out what must have happened. What accounts are we going to use here? What, what accounts would you work with in general? If they didn't give you that hint. What accounts do we have to deal with here? Probably accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts, of course. Those are the ones in the balance sheet. What are the ones in the income statement we probably work with related to sales? And then the portion of the sales we never collect are called bad debt expense. Got it. The portion of the receivables we expect never to collect is called what? Allowance for doubtful accounts. It's what we expect. It's not what's going to happen, right? Same thing with the bad debt expense. It's the portion we expect never to collect with the sales, right? Okay, anyway, so when you started a year, what were your sales? Nothing. When you started a year, what was your bad debt expense? Nothing. So you sort of approach this the same way, right? You need these problems. Those are the accounts. What did we know about accounts receivable at the beginning? Six million eight hundred and forty three thousand. Is that the beginning? How do I know that's a debit? It's a receivable, it's an asset, of course it's a debit. Okay, what's the ending balance? Six three five seven. Everybody agree with that? Okay. And then what? We know the beginning balance is six ninety in the allowance and the ending is four thirty, is that right? Is that really what's going on here? Seems kind of funny, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem kind of low at the end? You guys notice that? Look at this. Six million eight, six ninety is over ten percent of it. And then six million four, four thirty is seven percent? Really? Come on. Okay. It seems kind of low. See where you can go with this stuff? Right? You can look at it and see, is that reasonable? Maybe they overstated their income by understating their bad debt expense. I don't know. Right? It is a real company. <laughs> All right, I assume they took real numbers off. Maybe they didn't. Okay, so then what do we know beyond that? We know that uncollectible accounts amounting to 414 and 454 were written up in year one and year two, respectively. And they're asking us to get, give them bad debt expense for year two. Tell me what the journal entry is for doing bad debt expense. Debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. You know what? If they asked me what bad debt expense was and I had an income statement with bad debt expense on, I'd just tell them what it was, wouldn't you? But I don't know what it is. Okay? Right? I don't know what the sales is either, do I? They didn't give it to me. Okay. It's not going to be helpful. Right? So what can I do, though? I know how much was written off, don't I? What's the journal entry for writing it off? This is for replenishing the account. What's the journal entry for writing it off? Debit the allowance because you found some of these in the allowance that you, that you realize are bad, and so you don't need the account anymore, right? You don't need the amount in the account if you found some, right? And then credit what? Accounts receivable. Why? Because we're giving up on some of those receivables. Does everybody agree with this? this is, that's all we're doing, okay? How, now, what about from year one? Are we calculating year ones or year twos here? Year two. This is the beginning of year two. This is the end of year two. Am I right here? 
That's it, isn't it? So what do you do with the one from the prior year? Well, nothing, I guess. Doesn't make any difference to this one, does it? How much do we write off, though, this, this, this most recent year? 854. 854. You guys agree with that? Is that the right one? 414 was the second year. Ooh. Write off was 414 in, in year two and 854 in year one. Oh, we don't want year one, do we? Uh oh. Year two. Good, thank you guys. 414 was it? Okay. The write off from the previous year would already be out of that 690. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, okay. So 414. Now, where does that go? Let's see. 414 came out of here. And 414 came out of here. Would you guys agree with that? Now, here's the deal accounts receivable looks funny, doesn't it? But remember, there would be all of your credit sales coming in here and all of your cash receipts coming in here. Would you guys agree with that? So, yeah, so we don't know that information, but they would happen, of course. Okay, on the allowance, though, what else is going to be in the allowance? Just that bad debt reporting, right? That's all that's going to be in there. So can you compute how much it is? Absolutely, you can. Some number got added to this 690, so that when you took away 414, you only had 430 left. What's that number? 154. <coughs> That's not enough. Is it? Or is it? What would 690 less 414 do? Maybe it is enough. 276. 276. Take 276 away from 430, and what do you get? 154. Oh, 154. Okay, I'm lying. It is enough. It didn't look like enough. 690 plus 154 less 414 is 430. So their bad debt expense is only 154. Huh. I think it's kind of low. They're really optimistic. Why do I think it's low? Because this number compared to that one is so low relative to this. And they had a lot of write off the year before, didn't they? Okay. But I think it's 154. So what did they ask us for? Determine the bad debt expense for a year or two? Yeah, we got it, don't we? Okay, good. Working capital is defined as current assets minus current liabilities. How was target's working capital affected by the write down of 414 of uncollectible accounts during the year? Okay, what was, what's the journal income for the write down? <coughs> so here what I'm going to have is current assets minus current liabilities equals working capital. I don't even know what the current assets are or the current liabilities are, do I? But what do I know about that journal entry? What's the point they're trying to make? You debited the allowance, right? And you credited the account receivable for exactly the same amount. How much did you change net accounts receivable by? Nothing, right? If you take 414 out of the accounts receivable here and you take 414 out of the allowance here, and then you take the difference between the receivables and the allowance. Don't you get the same number before and after? Yes. So the point is, it does not change anything. It doesn't change working cap. It doesn't change accounts receivable. It doesn't change current assets, right? So it wouldn't change current liabilities, right? So it doesn't change working capital. Does it change net income then? Of course not. It doesn't change anything. Okay, got it? Just those two accounts. And that's the point of that. How was net income affected? Well, I guess we said that too, huh? not affected by writing it off, right? But what about bad debt expense then? What happens with bad debt expense because you wrote it off? You'll have more bad debt expense, right? Everybody good with that? Is this easy or what? Everything's easy when you know how to do it. Absolutely. So know how to do it. And now everybody's thinking, I wish the quiz was over, now I have to do it. Right? over a third of the work you need to do this semester to make sure your grades are good and your knowledge stuff's really good? I don't know. We'll no. <laughs> <laughs> Start working, gang. In all your class. See ya. <laughs>